Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pine Castle. My name is Jim Poling, and this is our weekly live stream of our services from Pine Castle United Methodist Church. I have some good news for you this morning because you see, today is designated by the United Methodist Church as Announcement Sunday. Announcement Sunday is the Sunday where we announce to you who our new senior pastor will be beginning in July for the next year. But I'm happy to announce to you that Scott George has once again be, been reappointed as your senior pastor for the next year. And on June the 27th of this year, Pastor Scott will have been with us for 10 years. And I'm sure that if you ask him, he'll say, boy, it just feels like a decade to me. Anyway, get up and jump up and down and be very excited about the fact that Pastor Scott will be with us for another year. If for no other reason, it'll make your neighbors wonder what you're doing. Okay, our PC share for this week is a question. And it is a question that you can post on your social media accounts, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, so that you can be a positive social influencer for Christ. Here is the question. What in this world would you exchange for Jesus? Pastor Scott will be elaborating on that in his message in just a few minutes. You know, this whole COVID-19 crisis has has generated a lot of new things that we're, we're learning, and one of them is a new term, and it's called frontliners. Now, frontliners, those are the medical professionals who are on the front lines, who are dealing with uh, the people who actually have this virus on a daily basis, and they're risking their health and their lives on a daily basis to do this. So today, we want to say a prayer for the frontliners. So let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you for those caring for and serving our communities. Thank you for servant leaders who daily risk their health and safety for others. Please protect them, Lord. Give them courage and strength, and let them feel your presence as they are working. Provide all that they need to serve others and provide for their loved ones. Send people to help and support them and their families. You said we would have troubles, but you have overcome this world. Please work together with our frontliners to bring about the best possible outcome. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. I have a question for you today. I would like you just to listen and think about it. The question is, what would you give up for Jesus? You see, sometimes we have to give up something to be closer to him. And sometimes he might ask us to give up something that is taking our focus away from him. So, I ask you again, what would you give up for Jesus? How about computer games and toys? What about playing on your sports team? Or watching your favorite TV show or even TV? And a hard one, what about time with your friends? or even giving up time with a friend that's not a good influence. I know that those are all hard questions, and I would guess that some of you don't even like that question. But let me remind you of the greatest sacrifice there ever was. Jesus, he came down from his heavenly home to spend time with us. And he didn't only come down from his heavenly home, but he died on a cross for your and my sins. He loved us that much. So if Jesus came down from his heavenly home so he could spend forever with us, I want to ask you again, what will you give up for him? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Thank you for leaving your heavenly home and sacrificing your life on a cross for us so that we can spend forever with you. Lord, help us to get our focus on you. And if there's anything we need to give up, help us to be in obedience to you because we know that is the best thing for us and that that would allow us to have a better relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids, keep thinking about it. Obey Jesus. Now it's time for Pastor John. Good morning, church. I'm John Bryant, Associate Pastor of Pine Castle United Methodist Church. Glad you're worshiping with us today. Have you noticed a good spirit of generosity and cordiality that's in the air today? I don't know whether it's because of the virus or what. But people seem to be giving, loving, and kind. And that's a good thing. Jesus said it is much better to give than to receive. And he also said when you give, do it with a smile on your face. Do it joyfully. So that's the way I'm giving today because like you, I love God, I love Christ, and I love the church. Let us pray. God. Bless these offerings today, these tithes, gifts, and love offerings. Let them be used to let others find the same hope and salvation and excitement for the future that we found. We pray together in the name of Jesus. Amen.
What kind of man welcomes the company of the hurting, helpless, and the hopeless? What kind of a man can heal the pain with a single soft touch? What kind of a man multiplies hope and freedom as easily as he does fish and bread? Who else can turn our dusty old religion into a brand new relationship? What kind of man would claim to be God in the flesh, but then allow that same flesh to be torn apart? What kind of a man would embrace betrayal? Insults. Torture. Mockery. And death. And yet, live to tell about it. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody. Who could speak with such authoritative words and yet drench them with compassion? Who could be strong enough to still the storms yet be so meek and humble? Who could allow the hands that created the universe to also be nailed into a wooden cross? Who could choose patience despite deserving immediate and complete obedience? Who could be blameless and without fault but still endure the judgment others deserve? Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody. Who will love us like him? Who will be with us when all others have left? Who comforts us in suffering? Who is our peace in the midst of anxiety? Who reassures me when my mind is drowning in doubt? Who accepts me as I am with no strings attached? Who else would die for me while I was sinking in sin? Who else can turn the grave into Easter morning? Nobody. 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 Nobody? But Jesus. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday morning to you. This is Scott George, and uh, welcome to our online uh, live stream uh, service this morning. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day, and uh, I'm glad to spend a few minutes with you so I've got my I've got my coffee here this morning and my cup says I woke up this morning and that's a good thing and you woke up and so we are here to uh, today to, to, to worship and um, obviously this is a little bit different than what we're all used to um, I can tell you how much I see in my church family I miss seeing them um, it's been one of the harder things uh, had to deal with past uh, past uh, several weeks, but nonetheless uh, we are together and God is glorified. And 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 yes, if you're wondering, I've got a little social isolation uh, beard going on here, but don't uh, don't mind me. I, I uh, finally showered and took my hat off. My kids said, "Scott, you can't wear your hat anymore." Dad, you can't wear the hat anymore. And and so they they, they made me uh, shower and, and, and get dressed. And so uh, here we are. And hopefully you're dressed. But um, if, if not, that's between you uh, and the Lord. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful time here uh, today, the next few moments. Thanks so much for the worship. And, um, and by the way, let me say thank you so much for your, for your giving. I don't know if you've noticed, but the giving to our church has increased uh, these past few weeks, and it is amazing. And I think it's a testament to our entire leadership at our team. I want to thank all our entire staff. I want to thank all of our, our leaders, our lay ministry leaders, our leadership team. Uh, you guys have demonstrated a tr tremendous amount of skill and compassion and excellence. And so I want to thank you for that. That is really amazing. Thanks so much for your giving. So we are in a, in a series here at the church, a year long series called hymns, hymns for hope, help, and healing. And um, how this came about uh, as many of you know, uh, the crisis that we faced as a family down in Miami uh, for 40 days. Uh, my son was in a coma, Austin, and um, I, I didn't watch the news. I didn't watch Fox News. I didn't watch CNN. I didn't watch ABC. I didn't listen to Z8.3. The only thing I listened to was the hymns, and it was an amazing source of strength. Um, and they just spoke to me. They just ministered to me. I can't explain it. I don't know why people would send scriptures and I was appreciative and that was nice and fine, but it was the hymns of the church that really spoke to my spirit and kept me strong. Um, there were days, many, many days, weeks 
where uh, Austin looked so bad and it was so painful for me to see my son in the condition that he was in. Tubes, monitors, machines, the whole that, that it was too painful for me to sit and, and, and watch him. I had to sit behind him and I put my headset on and I'd open my Bible and I would allow the, the hymns of the church just to speak to me and it, it really saved my life. I'm so grateful for that. So because of that, we're going through uh, the hymns uh, of the church and uh, this week is a hymn that uh, really is not real popular, but I love the message. The message and the, the name of the hymn is Jesus is all the world to me. Think about that for a moment. Let me ask you a question today. What in this world would you exchange for Jesus? Think about it. In this whole world, if you could exchange, if you could change, if you could uh, exchange anything in this world for Jesus, what would it be? And I can't think of, uh, of, of anything. Uh, the things we work so hard for, the things we value so much when it comes down to it, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather have Jesus. Uh, the author of the, uh, of the hymn is Will Thompson, and he wrote it in, in the 1900s, 1904. He was a successful businessman. He was a publisher. He's written several hymns. In fact, uh, his most famous hymn was Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. What a beautiful, beautiful hymn. He was at a D.L. Moody revival service. And the Lord touched his heart, and he was convicted, and he decided that he was going to give the rest of his life to publishing hymns and writing hymns. And uh, he wrote this hymn, Jesus is All the World to Me. And later on in, in his uh, last few years, actually last few moments, weeks, um, he had a meeting with D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody, the great worldwide evangelist that led so many people to the Lord, D.L. Moody uh, spoke with uh, Will Thompson on his, on his deathbed. He told Will Thompson, he says, I would rather have written that song softly and tenderly than anything that I've accomplished in my ministry. And D.L. Moody used that song for years and years. That was the author, Will Thompson, in 1904. And he wrote to him, Jesus is all the world uh, to me. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, it's got four verses in the hymn. And uh, we're going to put it on the screen. I'm just going to go uh, verse by verse. I'm going to take a thought. I'm going to take a few words from each verse. So I've got four points, and they're coming from this hymn, Jesus is All the World to Me. And uh, so you can follow along. And then, uh, obviously, we have uh, devotional questions that we send you on Monday. So tomorrow morning, I will send the questions to you so you can have a little bit of devotional time and kind of think about it, meditate on it. But uh, we're going to take the hymn, Jesus is All the World to Me. And uh, I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts. Here's the first thought. Number one, uh, Will Thompson said it this way in verse one. He says, he's my strength from day to day. I love that. He's my strength from day to day. What is, what is making you strong uh, during these, uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic that we've been faced with? What has kept, kept you together? What's kept you uh, solid and strong? And I would say for most of you, uh, it would be, it would be your relationship with Jesus because Jesus is all the world to me. He, he's my strength from day to day. You know, what's crazy is you wake up and you turn on the TV and things are changing so rapidly. You don't know how to plan. You don't know how to prepare. Why? Because uh, this thing is so fluid and mobile and it's hard to plan from day to day. You don't know what you're going to do. And in a weird way, that's really, really good. Because we are to look to God every single day for strength. Remember the children of Israel. God provided manna for them. And he didn't bulk up in a Costco kind of fashion and just dump uh, pallets uh, of food for the people. He said, I'm, I'm going to be your source and it's going to be from day to day. And I want to encourage you today. You, you don't have much control over tomorrow. You don't know what next week is going to hold. We don't know when this thing's going to end. And we're going to get back to normal. By the way, um, I don't really know what normal is going to look like. It's going to be a lot different. But my point is this. You've got to trust God every single day. And Will Thompson was right. He says, you are my strength from week to week, 
from day to day, from minute by minute, you're my strength. You are my strength. The Bible says in Psalm 46, let me read this to you. I love this. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. Psalms 46, verse 1. Will Thompson was right. Jesus is all the world to me because he is my strength from day to day. Don't worry about next week. Don't worry about tomorrow. That has enough tr trouble of its own. Worry about today and allow God to be your strength from day to day. Jesus is all the world to me because he's my strength from day to day. Verse number two, I love this one. Will Thompson said, Jesus is all the world to me because he's my friend in trials sore. He's my friend in trials sore. Think of your best friend right now. If I were to ask you, who's your best friend? And then a blank and a question mark, who would your best friend uh, be? Most people have just a few friends. They've got a lot of colleagues, a lot of acquaintances, but they only have a few friends. What are some of the attributes of, of a friend? I think for me, I, I would say that they've got to be trustworthy. They've got to be available. They've got to be someone who listens, someone who gives good advice, someone who is just there and I'm allowed to be comfortable with and be myself. These are all the attributes I think of what we look for when we uh, evaluate what a friend is. And there's many, many more. Will Thompson, when he wrote this hymn, Jesus is all the world to me, he says, Jesus is my friend when I'm faced with trials. You know, you're going to hear about this for many years uh, in my life because Jesus took us through a, a traumatic uh, crisis as a family. And I can really tell you, I don't know how people deal with crisis like that. I, I don't know how they deal with uh, death and, and depression and, and, the, and, the, and the cares of life without having someone to go to like Jesus. Jesus is our friend. He's available for you. I mean, if there's one message that I would, I would love to just resonate out of my life to other people is that, is that God wants to be your friend. He wants, to, he wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants you to, to, to trust him and rely on him and talk to him and walk with him. There's another old hymn. Yeah, Jesus, uh, he, he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Jesus is a friend. And I want to encourage you today to look to him to be your friend. I can tell you that, that he was an enormous friend for me. And I'm so grateful. Um, I'm delighted to tell you that uh, I've written a book about this experience and uh, it's already written. Uh, it's called uh, Blindsided. How to get up when life knocks you down. And it's going to be for people that are faced with all sorts of hardships and trials and, and, and tough times. And the book is going to come out um, on September 14th, the year after Austin's uh, accident. And it's already written and it's already begun to, uh, in the editing process and the publishing process and working on the cover and all that. So in the next few uh, weeks and months, you're going to be seeing a little bit more about that. It's just a story of what happened in our lives and how life knocked us down. We we're blindsided. But whenever you're blindsided by life, there will always be someone who will be there for you and with you. You can trust him. And his name is Jesus. Will Thompson was right. Jesus is my friend in trials sore. Number three, very quickly, Jesus is all the world to me because he's my strength from day to day. Uh, he's my friend in trials sore. And then number three, I love this one. He watches over me day and night. When I, when I think of that phrase, he watches over me day and night. I remember uh, um, with my kids, we put them to bed. It didn't matter if they were couple months old or a couple years old, you know, you'd tuck them in, they'd finally fall asleep. And as a, as a father, as, as a mother, as a grandmother, you would just stand there and just, and just watch over them. Now think about that. If you do that as a, as an earthly father or mother, or grandmother, or grandfather, how much more is God going to do that over you? And here's the great news today. Let me get a sip of coffee here. Will Thompson was right, and he says, Jesus is watching over you day 
and night. Let me read this scripture to you, and it's, it's, it's found in Psalm 121. Take your Bible and go there with me. Psalm 121. Let's go there quickly. We've only got a few more minutes. Psalm 121, and listen to these beautiful words. Psalm 121, verse 1. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you does not sleep. Indeed, he who watches over Israel, he who watches over you will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, and the sun will not harm you, nor the moon by night. Will Thompson was right. Jesus is watching over you. He's watching over you. He's watching over your business. He's watching over your family. He's watching over your church. He's watching over this country. He's watching over the world. He's watching, and he's watching over us day and night. I encourage you to rest in that, to know that he's watching over you. And that's why Will Thompson says, Jesus is all the world to me because he knew that, 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 that God was always watching over him and God was always going to protect him. And that can give you confidence and strength and courage, even in these difficult times. God's watching over you. And then number four, quickly, as we close, uh, Jesus is all the world to me because uh, he's my strength from day to day. He's my friend who I face with trials. He watches over me day and night. And then I love this one. Verse four of that great hymn says, I trust him now. I trust him when. Life's fleeting days will end. Wow, that's powerful. Um, just got word just uh, uh, yesterday of a dear friend of our, uh, our family who passed away. Known him for 30 years. And um, I'm going miss, gonna to miss him dearly. A dear friend to my, my father, my mother, my family. Uh, and uh, just, just got word of this yesterday. But I knew, do know this, I know this about my friend. Uh, he was trusting Jesus even till the very end. And that's what Will Thompson said. Will Thompson said, I'm going to trust you now. I'm going to trust you when. I'm going to trust you when life's fleeting is end. And that's confidence that we can have today. You know, um, the average life expectancy of a, an American is 79 years old. That's all you got. You, you've got 79 years. And I broke this down. That means you have 28,835 days. You've got 4,108 weeks. You've got 2,402 months, and you've only got 79 years. So I would challenge you today. You've only got 28,000 days in your life. Make the best of it. And let it be said of you that in your final days, in your final moments, when you're taking your last breath, that you have trusted Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is all the world to me. You've only got 4,000 weeks. I'd make the best of it. When you're evaluating what to do and what not to do, in the back of your mind, you need to be thinking, I've only got 28,000 days. I better make the best of this day. The Bible says make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So you only got 28,000 days. Make the best of it. Uh, live it in service of others. Live it giving your life away. Live it uh, with something bigger than yourself. And at the end of your final days, you can say, I trust you now. I trust you when. I trust you when life's fleeting days will end. When you have that kind of attitude mentality, then you can truly say, Jesus is all the world to me. Would you bow your hearts with me and let's pray just for a moment. Father, thank you for uh, Will Thompson. Thank you for his ability to write a hymn that touches our hearts and challenges us. God, we agree with D.L. Moody, what a great hymn this was. And we do agree that Jesus is all the world to me. Lord, I pray today that you will make yourself real to your people. There's some people that are watching, they're scared. They're getting ready to lose their business getting ready to get uh, laid off, faced with difficulty and struggles. 
We're so glad that we can come to you and we can run to you during these times of weakness and hardship. And God, we do run. And I pray that you'll be a, a friend. Be a friend to your people today, God. Help them. Speak to them. Guide them. Lead them. And God, we declare today that, that, that whenever our life is over and we've taken our last breath, it's going to be said of us that we trusted in Jesus and Jesus is all the world to me. God bless you, church. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. I have some sad news to report today. Jim George, the former senior pastor at Pine Castle United Methodist Church and the father of our current senior pastor, Scott George, passed away this week. No news yet on a memorial, but we do expect to have an online service sometime over the next two to three weeks, so please be sure to check back for details. You know, Pastor Jim played a pivotal role in the life of Pine Castle United Methodist Church, and right now his grandson, Aaron, would like to end today's service with a special tribute to his grandfather. Will I 